Welcome back. Futures are higher this morning. Fractional gains uh, ahead of a busy day for economic data as well as earnings. Take a look. Dow Industrials up 16. NASDAQ up 82. Real bounce in growth this morning. Southwest Airlines, American Airlines and JetBlue will be reporting before the opening bell this morning. Joining us right now is the Bonson Group Chief Investment Officer, Founder and Managing Partner. He's author of DividendCafe.com and host of a six-part video series called No Free Lunch in Defense of Free Enterprise. David Bonson is here. Good to see you, David. Good to see you, Maria. A lot on your plate right now. Your take on the earnings period so far. Um, as we get a little further along, it's starting to feel more Darwinian, meaning that there isn't a clear trend of uh, up or down. The financials were kind of pretty good relative to expectations. There were some exceptions like Goldman Sachs. But now all of a sudden you're seeing some with Microsoft admitting forward that they're going to have difficulties maintaining that revenue growth. Yeah. And, and others have kind of bucked the trend. So I think we're going to see that. It's going to be very divergent. So what does that say about the broader story? Because it, we're getting the GDP out this morning. We're expecting growth yeah. for the fourth quarter, uh, 2.5% growth. And the GDP will get the Fed's preferred inflation reading tomorrow with the PCE. Yeah. But you're seeing a slowdown in earnings for sure, certainly from the guidance. You're definitely seeing a slowdown in earnings. And I do think you'll go to negative earnings on the year. But I will say this. If you don't, it's not a recession. By definition, a recession has declining jobs, declining wages, and declining corporate profits. I think corporate profits will go negative, but what people don't realize is they really were last year, too, if you strip out energy. I love saying it because we're such big energy well, investors. there's no growth beyond the energy None. companies. No, there was negative growth yeah. beyond the energy. But, of course, energy counts. I mean, technically, the S&P had positive earnings growth, but it was 5%. They have no cushion. If you go into recession, it comes negative. So is that the same thing this year? You're expecting growth in oil companies, but no growth elsewhere? Um, yeah, I think that there is possibility of some growth in financials this year. Uh, but no, more or less, most sectors are going to go negative. And technology is the one that's fascinating. Uh, the weakness there, not just on earnings, but on revenues, on forward guidance, and obviously what they're doing in the labor side, uh, the layoffs are massive. A lot of cutbacks. Yeah. I'm a tech guy by trade, but I want to ask you about consumer discretionary, right? If we look at the analyst cutbacks, it's been the most severe there, and there's the most contraction that's possible. And we can argue about the definition of a recession, but is that not the sector that we really have to be keeping an eye on to figure out where the consumer is going? Um, what, what's your thoughts there? So let me answer macroeconomically and then as a portfolio manager. Macro, you're exactly right. There's a lot of exposure there, and it's a very leveraged sector, and so it's more susceptible to what's happening in monetary policy. Uh, as a portfolio manager, I've had a 0% weighting in consumer discretionary for 25 years, <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and keep it 26 years. <laughs> you're a contrarian. All right. I like it. Uh, it's, just, it's a very leveraged space, and I can't pick winners and losers. I've always said, I don't know what my teen daughter wants to wear tomorrow. I certainly don't know what teen girls are going to wear. Amen. Yes, but I mean, overall, do you see a slowing? I do, but I don't know that that doesn't mean soft landing. And this is, the, okay. if you recall the 2002 recession, I've been using this analogy more. Um, a lot of people in America didn't know we had it. It was really dot-com centric. I mean, the 9-11 event really added to it, but it was exactly two quarters. It was very shallow. And right now I see 10,000 layoffs at Microsoft, but I don't see layoffs in food and beverage and hospitality. Yeah. I think you could see a recession that hits Silicon Valley and not really a lot of the rest of the country. I, I don't know that that will happen but it's possible but isn't it because mark we're talking so much about this that they overhired go oh, before, we, well before COVID. and especially small businesses so small businesses were kind of boxed out of hiring right like yeah. if you think about it at the beginning of the pandemic it was the big fortune 500 companies scooping up all the talent small businesses were, were boxed out they couldn't find the talent and then eventually they were able to find it so i feel yeah. like there's like a, a labor hoarding phenomenon yeah. going on with small businesses where they finally acquired that key talent and they're going to hang on to it a little bit longer than they normally would and then finally come to the realization that wow we got to cut some headcount we got to cut some which makes headcount. what's happening in tech perfectly reasonable right they yeah. overhired early if they weren't laying off people right now it'd be concerning because you see the economic backdrop microsoft reports a two percent decline in overall revenue 13 percent in video gaming they need to be cutting headcount as prudent managers of investors capital so and, it's, and it's a wanna, natural uh, give and take in the i agree market. completely but i also don't know that it's going to hurt the company's operations 20 percent of citigroup was laid off in one day in 2008. And the next day, every ATM machine was working. Every bank was open. <laughs> Artificial intelligence he, taking over Elon all the Musk laid off 70% of Twitter. The average pay was $170,000. 70%. 
There's no difference in company but operations. Half of Americans think we're already in a recession. 25% more than that think one is certainly coming. And so that has to absorb or reflect people's real anxiety about what's happening right now. And, and then Alan Greenspan used to call it the wealth effect, right? I mean, it dictates yes. behavior. Absolutely. It does. Yeah, I think the wealth effect, the problem there is I'm not sure it's as related to people's 401ks and stock portfolios anymore, other than within Silicon Valley, which was also the story last year. The Dow was down 8%. It was the NASDAQ down 33%, right? There's a big difference. It was home values in 2008, and there was a lot of equity extraction. People don't oh, yeah. have adjustable rate mortgages now, and they do have equity. Housing's coming down, but I'm not sure it hammers the consumer the way it used to. Yeah, great points. Great to see you, David. Good to see you, Thanks Maria. very much, David Bonson joining us.